Hi, I'm Allison Hazlitt with FlickDirect.com, and I'm talking with Mildred and Gail Kirschenbaum about Look at Us Now, Mother. Hi, ladies. Thanks for talking with us. Hi. <laughs> so, Gail, when you started this idea for this project, what were your expectations? What were your goals? My motivation was to make a movie to help people. So that was, I had no intention to ever make this film. Uh, I saw a need because I made a funny short film called My Nose about my mother's relentless campaign to get me to have a nose job. And people stood online afterwards to tell me their story. And I heard so many stories of people in pain from childhood abuse from somebody close to them. And I realized, wow, it doesn't matter if somebody is famous, successful financially, if they were hurt by somebody when they were young, invariably a parent, and they haven't forgiven that person, that's affecting them. It's affecting their relationships. It affects your health. Because when you hang on to anger and resentment, it only hurts you. So I became a woman with a mission. And I knew mom was funny. Uh, today wasn't when I grew up. At least I didn't. Uh, uh, nope, she wasn't revealing it to me. And uh, she agreed and was willing to come on this journey. So, so Mildred, I have to ask you, there are couple of points in the film where you really seem very vulnerable. Once in Gail's apartment and then a one time during therapy. How, watching that back in the film afterwards, how did it make you feel? Um, nowhere in particular, you know. In Gail's film when I said you should make something about abusing elders, I meant it. Because uh, young people have big mouths to senior citizens. It's very true, absolutely. Um, I, and you know, we just came out of a theater where we had a Q&A, and what touched me, and that's why I don't mind that Gail used me for this film. <laughs> there was a couple there, a woman there, she hadn't spoken to her daughter in 10 years. She had no relationship with the grandchildren. And when I hear that, it breaks my heart because I cannot figure why people do not talk to their children. You always love them. You don't have to like them. <laughs> that is very true. Um, you've talked a little bit about the audience response. Is it helping you in any way with your relationship with your mother, the type of response you're getting from the audience? I don't think it's helping us in our relationship. No, it's, it's, it's warming my heart. It's making me work. Well, what it's doing to me, it's making me work seven days a week, nonstop with a, uh, I am a woman with a mission. I've been told by audience members who point their finger into my face and say, it is your job to get this movie out globally. Everyone has to see it. So it makes me uh, pretty driven by seeing how people react to it. And it's really not a film about a Jewish family because we were at one um, place and a black woman came up and said, you're just like my mother. Uh. And an Indian woman approached you and all her problems. So it affects every color, every race, oh. every creed. You know, it's interesting because when I watched it, I thought, a lot of it resonated with me because I am a Jewish female whose parents were from Brooklyn and I grew up in the Northeast, but I wondered how it would translate to Southern Baptists and to, you know, middle America Christians. Well, we just, uh, first of all, I am approached constantly by people. We won several awards and all the awards that we won were actually at festivals that were completely non-Jewish. I did racial profiling, and we won Audience Choice Awards. We've won Grand Jury Awards. We just won a Doc Impact Award. Um, I have been approached, followed, mobbed by people of other colors and ethnicities saying this is my story. In fact, just we just came from another screening at another theater, and it was funny because it was, it was primarily a Jewish audience, and a woman says, this is a, like a typical Jewish story, and a guy like raised his hand and goes, first of all, I'm a therapist. Second of all, I am Catholic. You, this is completely, this happened in my world, so we don't own it. You know, it's not just, yes, we don't own, uh, we're not the we only. We don't own guilt trips. <laughs> right. Everyone owns part of <laughs> yeah, everyone has dysfunctional experiences in their life. And, and this is a human story. Essentially, this is a human story. It's about human behavior. I absolutely agree with that, too. Um, and 
I love the part sitting in the therapist's office where, you know, you keep saying, I don't know, I don't know, and, I, and I'm waiting. For why I say, I don't know. I'm going back to the film where uh, you saw I lost a sister. Come on, I was six or seven years old. I should have memories. But in my generation, when I was brought up, our parents shared nothing with us. We never heard of the word cancer. Uh, I should know there was a funeral. I should know there was a ship. Obviously, they must have sent me to an aunt's house or something. I have no memories of it. And I, it's not that I blacked it out. I just was not there. And when I mentioned that to my cousin, who I mentioned it last year, and she's a half a dozen years older than I am, and she said, I never knew you had a sister. Well, that's actually in the film. Yes. You know, when she meets with the, right. Yes, yeah. I remember that. That was yeah. very, I thought, I thought, how could a first cousin not know you had a sister? I thought that was so interesting, but you. Because baby was sick, and they didn't talk about it. Yeah, and, there, and back then, there were a lot of first cousins, you know, yeah. they, you know, no my. No talked about it. Do you ever yeah. hear of anyone go to a psychologist? No. Well, even in my youth growing up, no one went to psychologists. And if you did, they, you know, they, secret. <laughs> no, they were considered nuts. What do you mean you can't take care of your own problems? Right. Exactly. It was the reason I made this movie was to help people, but to teach people how to forgive. That is important, that it's important to learn and to have the ability to forgive because you do it for yourself. Your parent who might have hurt you and was abusive could be long dead. And, but you still could do the work and forgive that person. Anyone who hurts you or is abusive un, is unkind, you have to reframe how you look at them and look at them as a wounded child because when people react and are nasty to other people, that's because they're starving for love and they're hurting unless they have some chemical imbalance or you know uh, some kind of disorder. But otherwise, because we all want to be loved and when you feel loved and nurtured, you're loving to others, but when you feel cheated of that, you're, you're f filled with fear and you're angry and abusive to people. And have you forgiven? Absolutely. And have you forgiven? Absolutely. <laughs> Not only that, but you know, I live in, I have a small place, but she has her own room. Okay. And yet when she comes down to Florida, she moved into my bedroom. <laughs> Is that because you have the better bed, though? No. <laughs> she does. The other room has a futon, and you have to lower uh, it. Yeah, she has a nice bed. <laughs> I wonder what your brothers think, seeing this film. How did they react? They are both very proud, proud of her. Very proud very of Very proud of Yes, me. they are very Extremely proud of me. so. Yeah. I mean, they did the interview um, because I asked them to. Mm -hmm. They're not, they, they're, you know, one brother's extremely private. They wouldn't have really wanted to do this, but they did it for me. Mm -hmm. And they had no idea what it was going to look like. Um, I didn't show it to anyone in the family, including mom, until I was done, done. Until the film was done and locked and, and ready to go. And I did a private screening. In New York, and mom flew up for it, and my brother in New York saw it, and we had a great audience. It was standing ovation, and she came down to the, to the stage, and she told the audience she never knew she was such a bitch. <laughs> and I thought that my next movie would be porn. <laughs> they were all coming around to her and saying, what's your next movie? <laughs> I just wish she would do it sooner or do something like that now so we can go viral with this movie. I keep telling her... A 92-year-old woman doing a strip tease. We get it on the internet. We'll go viral, Mom. We'll sell a lot of tickets. Send us the link when it's done. We want it. Absolutely. What are you working on next? Well, I'm working on everything related to this film. So the next is, is all really, we're building a movement focused on forgiveness and healing between mm -hmm. mothers and daughters. So all the content is related. I, I, I'm going to be writing a book, my story, and launching various initiatives. So this is this is it. My life is now... I have a new, I guess I accidentally am reinvent, I accidentally reinvented myself, not intentionally, but based on the reaction because honestly, I don't know anyone who has a mother that would be willing to do what my mother did and is as funny, as smart as she is, and I'm open. So, uh, and the audience is blowing me away. I've touched a nerve. People are coming back. They're seeing it more than once. A woman today just 
came back. She it was at a festival down here, and she goes, "Oh my God, it was better the second time." You know how many times I hear that? I saw things this time I didn't see the last time. They come back a third time. They travel. Oh, I saw it in Florida. Now I saw it in Canada. Oh, I saw it in <laughs> I saw it in Israel. Now I saw it in Toronto. It's like so funny. And then they want to bring other people. And I'm hearing the word evergreen, which is like the best thing you can ever hear that the film is evergreen. I'm hearing from the mental health field. A guy announced he's a PhD in psychology. This should be required viewing for everybody in the mental health field. So yeah. this, it's like, I'm, I'm not going anywhere, meaning I am going to expand on this. I hit a nerve, I'm, and it's helping people. I wake up to emails that warm my heart. You have no idea how your film changed my life. I decided there's no reason to hang on to the anger and resentment, and I called my father. Uh. It's like people's, I didn't speak to my mother in 10 years. I ca ca came home, and I called her. And I mean, it almost puts tears in my eyes because I feel like, whoa, and yeah, and you know, I do a seminar, I have these seven steps, I teach people how to forgive. So everything, I'm, I'm going to go out and as soon as I get done with this part out there as a speaker and a, you know, everything related to this topic. Using my gift, and you know what's so funny, because when I was young, I think anyone who has a challenging childhood often thinks about becoming a psychologist. <laughs> yes. And when I went to university, which is pretty young, I went right into the art department because I, as you see in the film, I was drawing since I was young. Mm -hmm. And it was just, you know, what I did, but I really didn't want to spend my life as a fine artist. I kind of wanted to be in film, but I didn't do it. And I volunteered at a mental hospital, and I volunteered at the TV station. I said, you know, I don't want to be around sick people my whole life. I want to be around creative people. So I've had this thriving, wonderful career mm -hmm. telling other people's stories <laughs> primarily. And it's, life is a full circle. So here I developed my craft as a storyteller. And innately, I think I was good with understanding people. I think I was born very intuitive. Mm -hmm. You know, I was born with some knowledge or something. I... People say to me at the Q&As, you don't, you know, you look like you have a lot of self-esteem. And since this happened, I say, well, because when she was criticizing me nonstop from the get-go, I knew I didn't do anything wrong. It was just, this is who I am, and I wanted to know what was going on with her. Because I always thought, who we are today, we have to look into our past, into our childhood. So I always wanted to know what made people tick, and in this case, my mother's, which took decades to figure out what yeah. happened in her childhood. So life's a full circle. So here I am, you know, I had a reputation in TV. Gail can get anyone on camera. She'd get the best interviews. But that's from my natural skill with people, which I didn't, didn't learn, just you born with. So it's a full circle that I can use my gift as a storyteller and my ability to understand people and now with this mission. So I'm staying on purpose here. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm really looking forward to the book. Absolutely. I just want to say one more thing that I loved about the movie, because even though you talk about your mother criticizing you and you were always different because you were artistic, I loved when they went through your, you went through your mother's house and there were all the pictures she had drawn and all the figures she had made. I thought that to me, even though she may not have said she was proud of you, it was so obvious how proud you really were of her. Absolutely. Gail's an artist. You know, when we travel abroad and we sit down at a table in a restaurant, and we're waiting for food, and in Europe you could wait and wait and wait. She always travels with a little pad and a pencil, and she's always sketching and drawing something. She's a born artist. <laughs> she's a born artist. And I'm sure there could be a book just of your doodles at some point, too. Doodles, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, look forward to this book. I just need to take some time now. Right now so. we're going on um, J-Day. Christian Mingle, we anyone? <laughs> oh, she's looking for a husband. So this is what happens when you grow up with a Jewish mother who only wants you to meet and marry like a Jewish doctor, and you get to be my age and you never married. She will take a lesbian who's a little person with two heads. She does not care. She just wants you Christian wait long Mingle. enough. And Christian Mingle's right, which is so funny. <laughs> Well, I think you've got more found what you're focused on right now, and I think it's really important work, as you said, and it, I really enjoyed the film quite a bit, so it was wonderful. Continued success to you both. Thank you thank very you. much. And thank, thank you. you.